Hi, uh, my name is Donald Fan. Uh, I'm otherwise known as Don Don on the workshop. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. I worked on a few different sets for Dota, but I'm probably most well known for Dragonites. First, the Father Dragon set for TPL. Now it's the Dragon's Ascension set. Um, so today I wanted to talk about the design and workflow that I use to um, go through making this set. And here's my PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too boring. So let's start off with uh, some comparisons of marketing images from Father Dragons, which is on the left, and Dragons Ascension, which is on the right. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little surprised at how well received the Father Dragon set was. I'm incredibly thankful, but to me, as I was working on it, there were a lot of design issues that I was not happy with. But for the sake of time, you know, I, I had to call it done. Um, so let's go over briefly what I did to show the TPL sets, and then I'll go into the my newer set. So I like to start everything with primitives. I don't do a whole lot of blockouts. I don't do a whole lot of like pre-production low-poly modeling. Uh, sad to say, as a 3D modeler, I don't like 3D modeling, but I do like sculpting. I'm just lazy. I'm sorry. Um, and so next, you just make the model. And that concludes my presentation. I will see you guys next year. I'm sorry. OK. <laughs> so hopefully that wasn't too awkward. Um, but I would like to go over what I did with TPL for real now. Um, it's a little embarrassing showing my 2D art. I'm not a 2D artist. I don't draw particularly well. I don't paint particularly well. And most of the time, my concepts are just chicken scratch just to get me started, just so I get a, a basic idea of what shapes I want to use. And then I start going into ZBrush immediately. Um, so oftentimes, yeah, if you look, for example, on the bracers, it's just a shape. There's maybe a line to indicate where I want some filigree or some detail. But since I have a hard time working all that out in 2D, I just jump in and usually go into 3D. And since this was an evolving set, I had to very, very early on in the process take a look at how I wanted the each leveling aspect to look like. So if you look on the left, that's level one. On the middle, level two. And on the right, level three. This isn't how it ended up being in the end because I felt like level one seems a little too basic, even for a level one set. Um, so this is more the final, the final high res that I ended up doing. And I built it in a way that I could try and tile as much as I could. Um, I wanted to avoid making three discrete meshes with three discrete texture spaces um, using three different texture sheets. So I tried to you know, make shapes that I could repeat and I can take away, I can add as I was going about doing the, the leveling process. Um, and here you can see the wireframes for what I ended up doing in the end, which is level one, level two, level three. Um, it's a challenge working on evolving sets because you're still limited to the same exact poly counts, the texture sheets, and the limitations depending on the item and the hero can be pretty severe. Uh, for Dragonite, he had a lot of room for his shoulders, which is why I decided to add the breastplates, which I think another set before me had done that as well. Um, but like everything else, like the skirt, I think it was, I think it was 250 polys for the entire thing, which is pretty rough if you're trying to have like a skirt plus armor on top of it. Um, so what it ended up doing is, as I 
built these shapes and I built the, the evolving shapes that go on top, oftentimes I had to go back underneath and delete things. There were a few occasions where I had to make separate texture sheets because I just couldn't get that, get all three levels in one, in one like 256 or in, oftentimes 128 by 256 texture. Uh, and so in the end, this is the level three form. Um, there, Marmor said there isn't a whole lot to talk about here, but I'll start breaking down, you know, what I didn't like about this. Um, some more marketing images. Let me take a look at the chats. Uh, question, have I attended any 3D classes? I studied some classes in college, uh, but it didn't involve working on video game arts. Um, I was doing mostly animation, animation, animation centric education, so that covered the entire pipeline of like rigging, animation, rendering. It wasn't until I graduated that I started working with 3D art, uh, 3D art for games, it's particularly low poly modeling and texturing. Okay, so a lot of people just wanted me to submit the TPL set and just remove the TPL logo. And besides the you know legal ramifications of just doing that, uh, I wanted to because I wasn't happy with the the final result. I wanted to do another pass on the design because I felt like it wasn't. There was a lot of stuff that I didn't resolve to the to my satisfaction. Um, so for first of all, um, like I said earlier, when you're doing evolving stuff, you really have to either be smart about how you build things, or you have to be content with the fact that you're building three completely different sets in one in one item package. Um, and as a result, I think. Duplicating objects, repeating designs, repeating shapes is the easiest way to go about doing that. And you can see here uh, the spikes on his right pauldron, they're all the same thing, basically. The spikes on his left shoulder pad, also the same. The tacits, also the same. The uh, bicep guard, also the same. And so, as a result, because each level had to outdo the previous level, I felt like it was getting unnecessary. Like the, the amount of silhouette breaking shapes I had just bordered on excessive. It was like spiky, spiky, spiky. You see spikes, you see the in-game shot, he's spikes, he's got the sword that's spiky, he's got his shoulder pad spiky, his helmet has more spikes than probably any other hero in the game. And one other thing that I didn't like was because of the way I was layering things, it created a lot of parallel lines within the model. And within those parallel lines, especially between the glove, the gauntlets, uh, and the tacits, they're all pretty much the same. So there's a, a uniformity to it that I found uh, a little too stagnant, but it was stagnant, but at the same time, it was also very busy because, I mean, this is something that you see from far away. I felt like the, for the size, like, for example, on the, the, uh, the bicep guard, like having that many small parallel lines, it just causes a, a visual confusion. And then as a whole, I started looking at it, um, like what kind of shapes did it end up using, right? So these are some of the, base, this, the big shapes that I use, but I could further break these down, but for the sake of simplicity, um, I try to consolidate it as best as I could. So, you know, I have a spike, I have a kind of an elaborate shape, pointy shape that had you know some filigree on it. I had a random circle for the 
the shoulder rondels. And then the, the biggest, I guess, most um, consistent design shape I had was within the gauntlets, the tacits, and the part of the shoulder pads, which I, at that point I was happy with it. But then I had this random square that was, for, that was caused by these, uh, the bicep guards again. And then the, the elbow pad was basically a diamond. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven shapes. Most of the times they weren't correlating to each other. And when I went about designing it again, I wanted to try and consolidate the number of shapes uh, just so there's a little bit more visual consistency. And just so it just sits better. So if I were to look at this again and look at the arm, let's say, so on the left is what I had for TPL and on the right is, this isn't what I ended up doing, but if I were to take the same exact idea of say having three layers for the bicep guard, an elbow pad, and a, a gauntlet, then I felt like I should try and at least build in some more consistent shapes like for instance the shoulder pad has you know it's a rounded curved pointy end bring some of that into the bicep guard bring a little bit of that into the elbow pad and wrap it back to the gauntlet another thing I had an issue with was the monotonous color uh, and it, it's really easy to fall into the trap, I think, of having a, a very monochromatic color scheme for heroes. And what, although that fits within the, the predefined uh, design, I didn't feel like, in this case, he just seemed over, overwhelmingly red. Not so much from the front, but particularly from the back. You can see from the closer up, you know, he's just red and he's separated by a few lines of white. And this caused me to think more about what kind of shapes that those colors are creating. And I do like to, whenever I'm authoring for, you know, Dota, I like to look at things from the in-game view a lot and make sure that all of my shapes are reading, all my colors are reading. Um, and what ended up happening here is because the red was outlined with white fur, that caused like very easy distinctions between his coat and his skirt. And it was just basically the same shape over and over. I feel like if I had a little bit more variety, something to break up that, like, that constant repetition, that would be a lot more useful. And this is another problem that I end up having is I'll design something, you know, in the, from like a front view, back view, in 2D or in 3D. And that's what I look at the most, right? But that's not what the player sees the most. The player sees the top view the most. Even this like zoomed in three quarter view, no one really does that. So yeah, I had a lot more variety in my lines and my shapes, but when you zoom up from top, it just simplifies this into that. So I was thinking, well, what if, what if I could bring a little more variety into both, into both the, the top view and a zoomed up view? And so I want to talk a little bit more about what I ended up doing. Um, so I think first, why did I do this? Um, why did I not just submit uh, the old TPL set uh, without the logo? And unfortunately, copyright laws are not that simple. Uh, I signed a contract with them, and the end result was they, they owned everything that had to do with Dragon Knight with the Father of Dragon set. So I wanted to avoid as much conflict as possible 
I don't know if anyone's familiar with the drama that happened after TPL got uh, banned, but there was a lot of stuff going on. I mean, everything, all the reasons are out there. I really didn't want to feed into that. Uh, so my goals, my goals beyond that were, hey, here's an opportunity for me to take another look at a set that was popular and a set that I honestly felt like I could do better at. Um, if I remove myself from certain limitations like working in logos or technical problems of avoiding making three separate evolving sets or items. So I wanted to unify and simplify those shapes that I had talked about earlier. Um, and one thing I liked about those were they had a lot of kind of fancy curves and peaks to it. There was a lot of filigree, a lot of fluting. Um, and the fluting and the filigree in the armor really, it said to me that this, this set was a very regal, a very like honorable knight set. So I wanted to bring it back to that and less of, hey, I've got spikes everywhere. I've got kind of like this plating everywhere. That didn't, that didn't, that didn't say anything to me at that point. It felt like it was just shapes for the sake of shapes, detail for the sake of detail, and it didn't have a strong theme, and I really wanted to, to bring that back, especially into the, the sword and the shield, because those were also very distinct. They didn't really follow any uh, design language that I set up earlier. Um, and, of course, I wanted to make it more visually interesting from the top view for the players, and for myself, because I didn't want to see a red armor or just a red guy running around. So some challenges um, were obviously if if I change a set, I knew that there would be some backlash, and that's just kind of what happens uh, in almost all of game development. Like any t for any project that I've ever worked on, if something came out like a year ago, and the developers ended up changing something even really small on it, then there would be huge community backlash. So the challenge at that point was, can I come up with something that's different enough from the first set? Is it interesting enough to warrant that difference? And how can I not alienate the fans? I had already accepted that a lot of people weren't going to like it, or they weren't going to like it as much as the old set, but I was fine with that. I just wanted to minimize the alienation. Um, also, the evolving process was such a big selling point. Would anything I do after that point be enough? Like, is it cool enough to not have any evolutions? And how can I change the color scheme without totally breaking the character? And I'm sure you know most people on Reddit and most people who the community they're very big on color schemes. I like to push it as much as I can. I do try to I, I try not to break things, but sometimes hey it happens. So here's my first pass at the concept redesign. Um, so I, here I am trying to bring in some of the design shapes and languages that I had I, I liked from the original. Try to play it up. Uh, I, I wanted to. So here I wanted to play up the fur, but I also I was afraid of putting the fur everywhere. Um, it, that was a popular design element from the first one, but I felt like that was a little too iconic, so I wanted to change that. I wanted to simplify it a little bit so that, for instance, if you look at the skirt right here, instead of going from red cloth to red to gold trim and then white, the, having that three color transition seemed a little excessive. Um, you don't see it here, but in the final, I, what I ended up doing was I decided to go with two colors instead of having three. Especially the problem with having three is that you have a big color shape here, you've got a small detail color here, 
And then you've got another small detail color right under that. And sure, that might look good from like a first-person shooter perspective, but since these things are pretty small in the end, that felt like it was just one color too many. And for the tying into tying in and building up the regal night theme, uh, I really wanted to have more swooping lines, more filigree, and more ornate elements like jewels. Jewels, I was a little, I wasn't 100% sold on that at first, but aside from throwing more detail and more lines on, on it, it was the easiest way to add color that made some sort of logical sense. The high-res sculpt. Um, these, these aren't, these are at different stages. So if I'm redesigning something or if I'm trying to figure out is my new design going to be stronger than the old one, I leave the old design on one side and I have my new design on the other side just so I could rotate from left to right which side I feel is stronger. I, at first I wanted to emphasize the breastplate, but the problem with emphasizing the breastplate was that it ended up repeating the original spike curve that the original Dragonite model had, right? So you know, one of the problems was, yeah, I was able to line it up on that first breastplate to one of the, the underlying plates, but anything I did after that, it ended up conflicting. Like, well, am I going to do, am, if I'm going to, is it going to be a small shape a small separation between that bottom plate and the bottom plate of his original? Or is it going to be a convenient uh, overlap and then that just causes like this weird tangent line? Like if I were to, uh, I'm not sure if you can even see it on here. Um, so I, I ended up scrapping that. I do little rib guards that I ended up taking out eventually too because it created this horizontal line, and I, I wasn't. Ha it just felt there's such a strong horizontal line that goes from his bracer to that rib to that this little point, and it just goes straight through the body. And as you look at that, and you look at the belts, there's also another straight, and there. And then at the end of the tacit, there's another straight. Now I don't like having so many straight lines because it really segments and interrupts the flow of the character. Uh, I, at some point, too, in the beginning, I had even more plating to go under the facets to create a more, like, just a more armored look. But eventually, I took those out. Uh, I, I didn't think they really added much other than possible design confusion, possible color confusion. And this is what I ended up with in the end. Um, the biggest difference between this and my concepts before was I was trying to figure out how do I make these spikes more interesting. Unfortunately, in this case, I decided to put more spikes on it, which didn't seem like it was a it was kind of a cop out solution. Um, and I couldn't come up with anything that was decent. I, at some point, I had a more feathery design, but since there were no other feather des design shapes on him. It didn't make sense for me to do it. Uh, and at this point, it did seem like just doing the spikes that were more in line with his helmet seemed like a better idea. In the helmet itself, I had to reorganize how I layered the spikes. Um, it seemed a little excessive in TPLs. He had a a lot of silhouette breaking shapes from different angles. And I wanted to streamline it so that the, the break doesn't happen at every possible rotation on the model. I ended up ending having these a more, some more curves into the helmets to try and draw the eye down a little bit more into his breastplate and also to 
to give a little bit more variety in his portrait view. The the boots, so the boots were also one of my attempts at creating a, a very easy to read difference between this and the old set. The old set didn't have boots, uh, and I thought having a, a really big, a strong color contrast right around the knees would be visible from the game and also give him just to beef him, beef him up. I had beefed him up in the upper torso area, but he seems a little, little skinny in the legs, so I wanted to add a, some more bulk to that to even him, even him out across the entire body. Uh, the sword and shield. The sword and shield weapons aren't my thing. I like armor. I like helmets. I like, sh I like, you know, all that. But for some reason, whenever it comes to designing armor, I mean, weapons and shields and all the accessories, that's somehow the hardest part. Um, I, I'm usually pretty happy with like the first pass, but that's because I can't see anything. I don't actually. I don't really know what's going on here. There are a bunch of lines. So every time I go in and either try to refine that through painting, through painter lines, or even in 3D, I get really confused. Um, so here are some silhouette tests, some different really quick uh, painting tests, and some of the earlier sculpting attempts at redesigning the shield. Uh, if you I think I broke it down in here, yeah. So in the end, I started looking at the concept that I, ha I had come up with before and the final sculpt for the armor. And uh, I was wondering what could I bring, what elements could, of those could I bring into the final design? So I wanted that filigree again in the sword. I wanted the fluting in the shield because it, it was such a large surface. It has so much surface area that the fluting would catch the light at the appropriate angles in the game, and just and, ha and break up that um, break up the highlights, break up the shadows, just give it a little bit more interest, visual interest to it. If I had to do it again, though, I would probably simplify it a little bit more. Uh, there are some shapes that I felt were unresolved, like these two fairly random plates that surrounded the the glowing, I don't know what they are, magical, magical metalness. There we go. Magic, magic glowing metal that runs down the center of the blade. How I would resolve that, I'm not entirely sure. Like, I'm, these are pretty quick, but I think each of them are probably more, uh, they're stronger than having this, this, having this plate, having that plate, and then having a random spike that comes out. Before I do anything though, uh, as far as texturing, um, I like to build a low poly. I bake out all my maps. I preview in game just so I can see. A, do I? How is my modeling looking? Like, am I capturing the shapes uh, accurately? And whether or not I'm pushing the texture beyond it, what it can really do. There's only so much you can do in a 256 by 256 texture. So oftentimes, I end up UVing, making, looking in game, and seeing that, oh, hey, that's pretty low res. So it's back to your drawing board. How do I? How do I arrange the UVs to be a little bit more compact, be smarter about everything, just so everything reads? And from here, I wanted to explore the color design a little bit, a little bit more. Unfortunately, I should work out colors beforehand, but I have a bad habit of putting, saving that for the very end. And that's kind of kicking me in the butt a few times, but that's just how I work. These are early tests of, hey, do I want how much gold to black to red as far as armor, as armored planing goes, and how much, and how, what colors I could use for the cloth. 
eventually I ended up with white um, because it's a fairly it's a neutral color. White and black goes with anything, right? So when in doubt, for me, I use white. If that's not working, I use black. It's I don't, I, it's a cop out. I know. I'm sorry, but it does give it. Uh, it makes him. It separates him. I think from both the previous Dragonite set, which is what I was after, and also I think it separates him from the other Dragonite sets available. Um, I actually usually am a lot more careful about how I paint these colors, but I was kind of in a rush. So everything's, you know, I'm not painting in the lines, but that I wasn't intending to show this to anyone. So um, here's the final model that I ended up doing. This is the final colors that are submitted in the game. Uh, Marmoset, a more detailed view of the of the model. And this slide, I think. I wanted to touch upon a, a problem that I think all workshop artists have, and that's dealing with the very different lighting scenarios that you might come across between, oh, I didn't include the portrait view, but the portrait view, the in-game, um, the in-game preview, and then the new loadouts. Fortunately, for Dragonlight, this wasn't too much of an issue, but for certain heroes, for instance, like Alchemist, Alchemist had very different colors. So it's hard to balance what do I author towards. And ultimately, I, I fluctuate. I go between making the in-game look good and then sacrificing the loadout. But sometimes I flip that and I, I prior towards the, um, the loadout view over the in-game. Depending, I don't have a formula for this, but it's something that's, it's, it's a tough call. And it's something that I guess I wish we had more options as far as maybe we, if we had customizable lighting for that set, that might alleviate this problem. So on submission, um, you always get feedback, right? <laughs> you get feedback from your friends that you show stuff to, and you get feedback from your fans, uh, your followers. And sometimes it's surprising, sometimes it's expected. So first, first and foremost, why didn't I just, why didn't I just remove the TPO logo? Um, the old set's better. Well, I can't really argue with that because if you feel the old set's better, you feel the old set's better. Uh, copyright isn't that easy to go around. For instance, uh, this is a bit of an exaggeration, but if you take the Coca-Cola logo off a of Coca-Cola can, put something else on it, Coca-Cola is still going to go after you, right? Uh, I understand TPO is not the size of Coca-Cola, but that's kind of the idea of what's, what's bound to happen. You know, I wanted to, to reduce the accountability uh, because what I do I didn't want that to reflect negatively back onto Valve. Um, I didn't want to cause trouble for anybody else, so I think the easiest way for me to do that was just make a new set. I didn't want to have, if I just submitted the old set without the logos, I didn't want to give TPL any other le leverage against me, so that also was a motivation. And finally, I really wanted to improve upon the design of the, the model. This was really surprising to me. Like, I expected a lot of feedback. I expected a lot of people to like, dislike things, but I didn't, under, I didn't expect the thing with the hair in the helm. Because, I mean, that happens in, historically. That's happened in other games. So I'm, I'm a little confused. I, I like the hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Why did I remove evolution stages? Uh, aside from the t the points I made earlier, there's definitely a time versus reward um, problem when you're working. You know, you hit you hit a, a point of diminishing return, where yeah, you spend like extra day on it, extra week on it, but that doesn't 
necessarily improve upon A, the model, model or B, the eventual profit return. Um, and I think evolving sets fall in that category where, hey, I could spend a lot of time making this, but that doesn't guarantee like the financial payoff. I think it satisfies like the kind of a personal goal of, hey, I made an evolving set, but for me that doesn't seem to be worth it. And so I'd rather spend my time developing one good set that I'm happy with, the final result, than making three unique sets that I am not so happy with in various stages of it. Why did I add blue gems? You know what? I don't know why I added blue gems. Well, I do, but um, I wasn't sold on that myself in the very end. Um, that was, I added blue just as an accent color to see what it looked like. I showed it to some friends, and their friend, my friends really liked it. I didn't like it. Well, I don't know. I wanted to find a better solution than add a tertiary color, but I couldn't find what that re result was, so I shifted it with blue. Why did I change it to white? Um, so I did do different variants of red and gold, black and gold. And again, it just felt very overwhelming. He just feels over, overwhelmingly red. And it wasn't something I was personally happy with, so I just ended up going with white. I think, I think white also helps sell the idea of, hey, this, is, this guy is he's kind of majestic. He's a regal character. The red didn't say that to me. Um, I guess you, it depends on how you look at colors, but it didn't speak the same to me personally. 